We will continue from session 2 and explore more of the CO2 menu. Piano can calculate pollutant emissions at any flight condition and for any mission, and many organizations around the world use it for that purpose. I will start a calculation from this item here. This will get Piano to run through the database and compile a whole bunch of data, and I will explain things while it's working. The United States Environmental Protection Agency is one of the first regulators to attempt to legislate for aviation CO2. In 2016, the EPA acknowledged Piano as the aircraft modeling tool that they used to generate final lawmaking proposals. These were published in the US Federal Register with their own subset of aircraft. What you see here are similar results produced from scratch just now from the entire Piano database. Unfortunately, the effectiveness of the legislation is neutralized by the application of a CO2 metric scheme conceived by ICAO. Despite its name, ICAO's CO2 metric does not assess any CO2 total for any mission. The metric is an equation. It gives you a number if you supply three values of fuel mileage, the cabin area and the MTOW. ICAO posits that that number somehow represents the technology level of the aircraft. It compares it against its own arbitrarily numbered curves, which it judges to be lines of constant technology or stringency levels. That, in a nutshell, is how ICAO makes a binary pass or fail decision for an aircraft type. Detailed technical rebuttals of ICAO's approach were published as long ago as 2012 and 2014, and there is no need to repeat them. Here we will take the ICAO CO2 metric at face value. We will simply apply it, as published above, to a few aircraft examples. As always, all numbers are independent piano assessments. We can examine the metric value for each aircraft directly. So, reverting to our 787 example, We have our three mileages, kilometers per kilogram or miles per gallon, the cabin area and the MTOW, and that is sufficient to derive a metric value of 1.42. That places the 787-8 somewhere around here. I can mark it. almost exactly on ICAO's line 10. There is no surprise here, this line is carefully shaped to pass through this concentration of points and another concentration down here. Largely these are 787s, A350s, NEOs and MAXs. Incidentally the red line is the in-production standard. You can select the new aircraft standard from here. We can now revisit our Boeing 777 examples from the previous session. Remember we had picked a selection of 200 LRs and 300 ERs. In that last session you saw the vast diversity in the transport efficiency of these examples. I'll just remind you that in its freighter configuration, the 200LR has the highest efficiency and lowest amount of CO2 per available ton kilometer in the entire Piano database. All our 200LRs happen to have the same MTOW, so this time they all collapse to essentially one point. They stop one here. All of them, including the freighter, fail the ICAO standard for in-production aircraft. The 300 ERs are each at a slightly different MTOW, and therefore they are a bit more spread out, but they too fail the ICAO test. One triple seven that does pass ICAO's requirement is the older short-span Dash 300 example, certificated for ANA ultra-short domestic operations and assisted by its low MTOW.
This is a 777 that typically serves 300 or 500 nautical mile routes. Of course, the brand new 777X model passes IKEA's requirements comfortably. This is a fundamentally different type that happens to exploit the same brand name. It can be found somewhere down here in this cluster. and it does indeed pass comfortably. Another type that passes is the Douglas DC-3. This PT-6 powered turbo Dakota conversion of the DC-3 is available in the database as a historical example. These are some plain notes And here is a 3 view, which cannot do justice to the aesthetics of the wing or the tail, so my apologies to Arthur E. Raymond, who was the chief designer of the DC-3, back in 1933. In 2020, we get around 2.2 ton kilometers per kilogram for our DC-3. We get a good grade for the IKEA in production standard. And we even managed to pass the new type standard. Perhaps you have heard the old adage that the only replacement for a DC-3 is another DC-3. But the serious issue we see here is this. The only replacement for a misleading CO2 metric is the full modeling of total amounts of CO2 case by case for both real and projected global fleets in their entirety. And that is doable. As I record this, the global fleet and our entire aviation industry are undergoing massive dramatic transformations. The new playing field is unknown. Meaningful rules combined with transparent modeling from a trusted and open common reference can stabilize and help to sustain the recovery. And that is significant. Moving on, I'll select another item. This will put Piano back to work, compiling another kind of database analysis while I'm talking. This time it is calculating a variety of raw data trends and these will let us examine plots and correlations of several important characteristics for the complete set of planes in the database. All kinds of interesting combinations are possible. We will also be able to sort all planes, all particular classes of planes, according to different characteristics. We can see how values are distributed ar across the database and do some other things. Piano is still working hard at analyzing more than 600 aeroplanes and it's just finished after about 40 seconds. So now we have access to all these characteristics. You can pause and read them all if you like, but I will go through some examples right now. So, for example, we can put range on the x-axis and number of passengers on the y-axis, which gives us a kind of global view of baseline missions. Or we can use payload instead. So this is effectively our global payload range diagram and this time it includes the freighters as well. That one up here is the Antonov 225. In fact we can reproduce and expand much of what we have already looked at. So I put transport on the x-axis and efficiency on the y-axis. You will recognize this from the previous session, transport versus efficiency. or I can plot transport against block fuel. This is the same information, just plotted differently. 
in this case the slope of any point relative to the origin is an indication of the efficiency so you see the freighters down here twin aisles single aisles and business jets we can plot MTOW against the ICAO metric value which is exactly the plot that we were looking at earlier but without ICAO's lines or we can replace the MTOW by span loading MTOW over span which gives a tighter correlation we can remove the labeling let us plot the IK pass fail percentage that's the percentage margin by which a plane will pass or fail the IK standard versus the actual transport efficiency you can see some sort of agreements there is a concentration for single aisles a concentration for twin aisles these are the business jets the great majority of which including all the modern examples pass the IKEA standard quite comfortably but in fact lie at the bottom of transport efficiency the freighters which have by far the highest transport efficiency all fail there is some agreement aircraft down here which would be things like the Illusion 62 extremely old designs are indeed highly inefficient in terms of transport efficiency and do fail the IKEA tests and over here single aisles that are very efficient like the NEO and the MAX also pass the IKEA test another thing we can look at is the cabin area per passenger which is an indication of average comfort level plotted against the efficiency the single aisles line up along here somewhere just above half a square meter per passenger to maybe something like 0.7 or 0.8 the twin aisles will have higher values and they will go from something in the region of 0.7 or 0.8 to more than one but you get the exceptional group down here of the business jets and things like Boeing business jets and Airbus ACJs where the cabin area per passenger goes to extremes and the efficiency plummets many typical statistical correlations that you would expect so for example the takeoff field length will increase if you increase the wing loading and will decrease if you increase the thrust to weight ratio so if we looked at the ratio of wing loading to thrust to weight and plot it against takeoff field length we would expect a strong correlation which is what you see across the database other things we can expect for example in terms of simple square cube laws we would expect that the linear dimension span would correlate to the cube root of MTOW and you do get indeed this fairly good correlation and you can do a correlation with the linear dimension and the square root of wing area also reasonable many other things you can plot MTOW versus MZFW I am not going to go through many parameters and combinations that are of obvious interest that would be too easy and it would lead us too far away if you start zooming in and focusing on specific aircraft families you can spend months here exploring and interpreting a myriad of patterns let us look at some sorting so I can sort all aeroplanes 
by span for example and we have the Antonov 2 to 5 at the top the eclipse at the bottom about 11 meters compared to more than 88 meters or I can sort the same planes by wing loading for example and we have some A340 600 that uh, have got very high wing loadings about 180 PSF right down to our DC3 which has got the wing loading of about 30 PSF you can make a selection of any aircraft that you prefer and set it as your new plane selection we can sort planes in other categories for example if I select the cargo planes I can sort those out by payload and we have the Antonov 225 at the top again the BAE ATP freighter with just 7 tons at the bottom we can also sort the labeled plane selection in this case we have selected our triple sevens and some other aeroplanes so if I do that and sort them by fuselage length then we have our 9x at the top then our 300 and 300 ERs our 200 LRs and 787 at the bottom or I can go and change my selection and select a series of Canada Regional Jets, CRJs and I can sort them out by number of passengers from 50 passengers up to 100 passengers we can also look at some data distributions if I look at the span loading the low span loadings are down here and they're associated largely with turboprops and business jets the blue points which are single aisles have higher span loadings the twin aisles have got higher span loadings still the double decks have the highest so that shows the 650 data points distributed in 100 bins so it's a frequency distribution of the data points across the entire database I can look at the distribution of uh, cruise speed across the database that's the average true airspeed you can see that most of the single aisle aircraft bunch together over here as they tend to cruise at something like Mach 0.78, Mach 0.8 and the twin aisles a lot of them will be around about Mach 0 0.84, 0 0.85 and down here we have our DC3 and these are just some examples of business jets operated in high speed mode I can look at the distribution of wing loadings So again we have low wing loadings for the turboprops and business jets, intermediate for the single aisles and higher for the twin aisles. We can also do some quick visual comparisons of the currently loaded aircraft against the aircraft that are labeled. So at the moment we have labeled the Canada regional jets so if I go and load the Canada CRJ 700 here I can compare it against the CRJ family if I pick for example the MTOW the range the number of passengers I can see some bar charts which show the baseline, the CRJ700-701ER 
against all the others, MTOW. Or you can look at the ranges, or the number of seats. So I will now pause and we will move on to examine flight maneuvers in the next session.